Alright, alrighty, right. Welcome everybody, it's Lazy Axe here, coming back with another quick keen tutorial. Uh, this is gonna be more of a how do I how do I use King, what's my game plan versus the basics of how do we just use play Tekken in general. So a lot of people have been asking, you know, how do I deal with uh how do I what is the flow of combat? Like when do I know it's my turn to attack? The simple answer is be patient. Uh, the complicated answer is you'll know it with experience based on moves. So here are the basics that'll get you going and and dominating in the ring early on anyway, at least in the early ranks. So, good easy way to do this, right? So we have our enemy character here. Uh, you may constantly be in a situation where you're trying to get out an attack, uh, but there it's always hits you first. You're probably doing that simply because there's something called frame advantage in this game. Which basically, the basics are this. Every attack in the game has a certain amount of frames to start up before it actually connects to you. On hit, it has a certain frame change. On block, it has a different frame change. What this does is, you see this blue? This is recovery, right? This is how many frames I'm in recovery. You can see with just a simple here, the basic king is blue a lot longer than I am meaning I can get my next action out before him. So I can just sit here and do this, and if he's trying to just hit me with something and getting hit, I'll just keep doing that forever. Now, on block... On block, I'm blue longer than he is, or roughly the same, right? Uh, this is actually... Every attack in the game on block has a different frame change to it. You'll become familiar with these, but the basics is what you need to know. If something hits you, stay on the defensive. So, let's say you're fighting Law or Asuka or something, and they go a high, a mid, and a low string. That's well, not a low, and a low string, right? So high, mid, low, real quick. Not a true combo, but it still hits you. That low hit you. Stay on the defensive. Because when they hit you, they get something called plus frames. On almost every move in the game, there's plus frames on hit. What that does is makes their next move, in essence, come out faster. So, with King, the square triangle, that's a 10 frame move, right? Uh, back, ac uh, back square is a 12 frame punish. 12 frames to get that out, 10 frames to get that out. If I hit with this, then I think it's plus 6 frames, meaning that only took 4 frames to come out compared to them. It's still 10 frames to happen. Um, but it only took four frames to happen again, so if they tried to attack me off that hit, they would take damage. On block, if if I do both these and they block both of them, now it's their turn, so now it's his turn to attack. Simply because I have a minus on frames, so when I do this into this, if I try to hit him again and he puts out a move, it'll be slightly faster than mine. This is where frame advantage comes into play. So with minus two on block, it'll add two more frames to before my move can come out. So I do that, he blocks it, and he tried to hit me again, he would he would succeed with the same punish, ten frame punish, because it would turn into an eight frame punish in essence, because it takes me two more frames to make things happen, so it took him two less frames, right? So when you successfully block a full string, you can generally react. Now every character is different and you're going to take matchup knowledge to know when the end of a string is there. Um, but that's the... so like if you just block this first hit it's, it's, it's plus two. It allows me to continue to the next string. So keep that in mind. Different hits have different frame advantage. As you play you'll know what moves you can use to punish moves, uh, what you can use to, to start into. Uh, so that's the base of the frame data. My base advice for you here is don't block holding back. That's generally a bad idea. All right, Just block your highs and your mid standing up. When you think of the lows coming, do your dash, you know, and then go into your punish. If you block most lows, you can go with you can head L2 for a nice little quick uppercut and, and get a launch punish off. Fun stuff. All right. Second question was, you know, what's our game plan with King? Like, how am I, how am I doing this? Like, what, what am I trying to achieve? What's my strategy? All right. So the basic game plan with King, the one I use that, and most of the time has really good results for me. Um, if it doesn't, it's because it's me as a player messing up. All right. 
what you want to do with King is we don't have any good lows. We're not like a Suka and Law, which can do a high mid and a low, and then a high mid mid, which will launch you if you try to block a low. You know, we don't have a mix up like that. So we have to use throws in place of our lows, right? And what I mean by that is things like things like that. That's a you know hard to react to grab chain. Uh, we want to we want to use things like uh, instant shining wizard. We want to use you know our grabs. We basically we want to use some lows, not a whole lot, but enough. And we want to mainly use command grabs uh, to force our opponent to start ducking. You know we want to be a little obvious. You know we want to do we want them to start ducking us. Uh, the reason we want that to happen is then, when they're ducking, all our launches are off mids, right? So, when they think you're coming in for a grab, and then you go into a hop kick, and because they were ducking, they got hit and into a full punish, you know, that's that's where your game plan's gonna sit. You're gonna be, your mind game is, am I gonna do a grab? Am I gonna, you know, am I gonna do a punish? Am I just gonna do a normal stream? You know? Uh, when they try to, when they think you're gonna hit, so they they go ahead and crouch. If you see somebody crouch before you're allowed to attack, so let's say you, and then they block, and then they crouch, immediately go into any kind of punish like this. Right. Another thing you have is from a crouch, you can go straight into a hop kick. Not every character has that. That's pretty good stuff there. All right. Uh, and you're basically going to mix up your moves to where you think they're going to go. How do you think they're going to defend? All right? uh, keep in mind that there's a lot of recovery frames on block for a hop kick, for a low. Uh, for this move here, it's got a lot of recovery frames even if you do hit it. Uh, but if you do hit it, I guess it doesn't matter. Um, what I like to do is crouch dash into uppercut because it's the fastest punish I got. Not fun. It's the it's the fastest uh, launcher that you can do off neutral position. You know, uh, when you block something like that, I might do a frame data video. All right. So you can be pretty aggressive. And you want to try to get them crouching on you, so you can go into your punishes. Um, and then you may ask, you know, is it you? So you play aggressive? Well, not really. You, you have three different styles of play. You have you basically have three ways you want to play. You want to play passive from neutral, aggressive, and then you want to look for counter hits. Uh, you want to play uh, more evasive, right? Uh, you want to look for duck options so you can you can go into a punish. Uh, you want to sidestep for punishes, right? Our sidestep game is not as strong as faster characters, so but it, it is there. You know, it's not like you can't do it. Um, you want to be trying to stay at a distance and using long range punishers, things like that. You mix it up. It's it's a constant flow. You get aggressive, then you get passive, then you get defensive, then you get evasive. All right, and something you have to learn as king, right? When someone's up, when someone goes to attack you and you're slightly first, it's called a counter hit. You can get this very easily with king all the time. I like to bait it out, right? So I'll come in like that, and then I'll. It's a frame trap. Because this punch, even on block, is plus frames, making that a 10 frame hit. So, so what you want to do with King, and you don't even have to do that, you can just fish for back back square. Alright, so back square, back square in a back triangle, it's a 12 frame punish, and it's pretty good. I like to just throw out a random jab and back square. It catches so many people to counter hit. So for this, I got counter hit set on. Well, why is counter hitting good with this move? Okay, so when you counter hit somebody, you can go to your low carry into a full punish. Keep that in mind. Counter hit, low parry, or low carry, full punish. All right. So wh what is your low carry? Okay. So our low carry is forward, down, circle X. So this move right here, forward, down, circle X. Uh, that is your low carry. And then from your low carry, you can experiment to figure out what you can do. So every part of combos, they have the initial launcher, the carry, the screw, and then the finish. So for this, is one of my, our most basic launchers and combos in the game, right? Low carry, into screw, into finish. Great 54 damage combo. You know, not a whole lot of bells and whistles on it. I haven't learned many combos for King. Uh, the ones I have are pretty basic, but when I learn good ones, I'll let you guys know. That's the basics there. And then you might ask, well, 
you know, it's easy to tech throws. How can, how are you supposed to make your opponent da or crouch all the time? How are you supposed to get them in that situation? And this is where your command grabs go in. Keep in mind, King has the best command grabs in the game. The best throws in the game. So, a regular grab throw is a one or two break. All you gotta do is, any punch button when some, you grab somebody will tech that throw. You know, if you're getting them off consistently, you're just playing against people who haven't learned to deal with them yet. But trust me, everybody will get there soon. People get throws on me all the time. Now, not to say they're going to get tacked every single time, and they're generally a safe option if you're not sure how to do things. So you can always just go for your basic throws. However, as king, we have man grabs, which are different, different breaks. So they're one or two breaks in general. All right. So I recommend that you learn two. I recommend that you that you learn death cradles grabs. Right, because this this grab that's a that's a that's a one break, right? And then rolling death cradle is a two break. So you saw when he flashed, that was where he had to do two. So it becomes a 50-50. They have to match which one they think you're gonna go in. So you have two, and then you also have this one. This is a one break. So you have a or a two break. So you have a one and a two break. And these are really easy to do. We have a one and a two break. Learn all of these command grabs. Just two of them. Just one. Go into training here. Um, go into training here. Just like this. Uh, have your opponent repeat an action. Go to your move list. So reverse special stretch bomb. You know, play it. So that didn't work. That's a two break. All right. So we know we know that. Reverse special stretch bomb is a two break. Okay, what about his sister reverse arm slam here? Let's see. That's a one break. So there's that. Uh, so death cradle, arm breaker. That's a one break. See what I'm saying here? It's important. Now these these things are almost instantaneous. So uh, if you don't know, regular grabs are always going to be 12 frames. And command grabs can be, uh, they can be 10, 11, or 13 frames, right? So I don't know the frame data on them. When I know, I'll put it out to you guys. So what you do is, is you constantly have these mix-ups where you're throwing out these super scary things. Command grabs, when you land a command grab, it is terrifying for your opponent. You make them feel pain. And they're going to start, they're going to want to start getting evasive on you. You know they're gonna they're gonna start ducking and stuff, and that's how you kind of force them into that string, right? Um, that's the basics of how you want to do that. Uh, is any any time you go into throws, you, you've got all kinds of mix-ups you can do, and and people won't know how to deal with them. So learn the initial grabs for every command grab you have, and then like just learn all of rolling death cradles combo, and all of reverse arm slam combo, or whichever one you want there. Uh, the reason you want to do that is so. When you go into a command grab, right? <coughs> it's, let's say rolling death cradle. It's you know that's one that we all love. So, okay. so we get to put into rolling death cradle. Let's say I failed to tech the first time. All right, rolling death cradle is a two break. So your opponent has to spam two if they think you're going to rolling death cradle. So you can break it. Spamming one will not save you. However, it's a branching path. Let's say instead of rolling Death Craver, Cradle, I just want to go to Dragon Sleeper Finisher. So there's the one break to stop it. But if they're spamming two because they think you're going to go into Dragon Cradle or rolling Death Cradle, then it's just not going to help out. But if they guess right, so they spam square, they can break that, right? And then. There are some command throws which have three parts in it. So, actually, it's a good sound test. Oh, that's a one break. And that's a one break, right? So, like I said, see, they're going to get to, they want to get to where they can duck those command grabs, right? 
that's the basics. That's how you put them in. So if you learn those, you, your mix-up is basically going to be what grab am I doing? And then when you do land a grab, which which one am I doing? Am I going into Rolling Death Cradle? Am I going to Dragon Sleeper Finisher? They have to pick. They cannot choose either one. Uh, they can't choose both. They have to choose either or. If they spam one and it's the wrong one, they lose all ability to tech uh, any further from that. If they do both of them at the same time, they lose all ability to tech any further than that. So while indeed they can spam to break you know, a chain grab, they have to pick. They have to pick X or Y. So it's a 50-50 um, every single time. And some command throws I hear are 1 plus 2 breaks. So you, you can learn that. You can, so you can add into a 33-33-33. That's pretty good shit right there, you know? It's not too bad. Not too bad at all. Uh, that's the basics of how you want to do Play King. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments down below. If you have any specific punish questions, let me know. Um, a lot of it's going to come with you in time. You can use the internet to speed this up. Look at your fastest, you know, launcher punishers. Which, like, I think that might be our faster, but don't quote me on that. Um, I, I, I like going into down crouch, into hop kick. That's one of my favorite punishes. Uh, sometimes I just hop kick. So when I do a combo on somebody, I might do a hop kick. It's unsafe because you get a lot of frame negative on block, but you never know. You know, you read each opponent as you fight them, all right? So that's like the basics of how I go about everything. Um, if you need any help, put it down in the comments down below. Or send me a message. Uh, either I'll make an entire video about it or I'll respond directly to you. Let me know how it's going, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, make sure you check out the other videos if you like this one. If you have any comments or you know uh, critique, put it down in the comments below. Um, let me know what you think, uh, and then I'll have another video out either today or tomorrow. Peace.